Chip Killer weighs in on current topical issues in dancehall. Well, chip, she's in the and uses the opportunity to introduce a new foreign based dancehall. Every day, chipping for cash, stacking and flipping the cash. One educator bats for sting. As the 30 plus year old dancehall institution struggles to make its 2016 staging. Welcome. And after one of the most sensational rises in reggae's history, Chronics now. Chronics are where you say, hey. Chronics is on our stage. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Winford Williams. You guessed it. We'll be back. The killer, gun Godzilla, Stella. Make more money than Gates. Bella, cash rules everything around me. Spella. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage. So much more than entertainment. Welcome back. December 26th is fast approaching and we are still uncertain about the presentation of Sting 2060. But what we do know is that the promoter is having serious challenges on one hand with sponsorship support and on the other contracting dancehall heavy hitters. Never before in the 30 odd year old history of Sting have we entered December not knowing who or what Sting is about. Our guest in this segment, like most supporters of Dancehall, is scared of the real prospect of no sting. She's Dr. Sanja Stanley Naya, AKA the Culture Doctor, right now, right here on our stage. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, so good, so nice to have you. Why is it so important to you to voice your concern about what's going on with sting this year? You know, Winford, when you think about Dancehall 30 years ago, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. In December, you would have seen 30 different stage shows, sometimes 19. Now we're down to perhaps three. Yes. And when, when you think about how Kingston's entertainment culture, the entertainment calendar for Kingston, for Jamaica, as a matter of mm -hmm. fact, when you think about December, coming from the days of slavery, there were celebrations at Christmas. These stage shows are a natural out, outgrowth of our celebrations at Christmas time. But there's a real jeopardy. There's mm -hmm. real jeopardy in terms of, one, the support for dance hall. And unfortunately, in some cases, corporate Jamaica has seen it fit to sanitize the aspects of dance hall that they consume, leading in some instances to what is now a prostituting relationship, as far as I'm concerned. That they take what they want, they take the portions that they want. But when it comes the time for sponsorship, there are all kinds of concerns and we know what some of those concerns are, but, but, but we have to make a decision. Public-private partnership is important for sustaining what is Jamaica's entertainment culture. We are the country. So that's a part of it that they're not playing to. They're not supporting the sustenance of these things. Absolutely, because in the long, in the long run, what, what is jeopardized is an entertainment culture that is built upon the sound system the stage shows like Sting, and we must understand that Kingston was just declared a creative city for music. In fact, in this period, we are celebrating with RJR, Kingston Music Week. We launch the fact that Kingston has been designated a creative city on December 4 at the waterfront. Mm. These are just parts and parcel of a larger agenda, certainly founded on the fact that Jamaica has given the world depending on who you're talking to, seven or eight different genres of music in the latter half of the 20th century. But isn't it because the, of the, the economic recession in 2008 that so many events fell apart? Absolutely. And, and, and we lost them. The economic recession and, is a part of it. And uh, some will say there is now a resurgence of, of new ones. Some are not going back to what it was, but are looking at what the space is asking for now. And there so, is a diversification in terms of that product. So spaces like Nanook, you know, there are certain kinds of shows that happen there. We know about Wiki Wacky, Wiki Wacky Festival. Uh, these smaller a, events. Yes, right. there's a diversification of the entertainment product. But when you think about a sting, which has been yes. a university of dance hall, many, many, uh, many an artist has, you know, been able to um, cut their careers, shape their, their, their profession on that stage. One of the things I would like to see, for example, is a transformation of Sting, the show, 
to be that stage where artists can actually perform for more than 20 minutes. And so we don't end up booking so many artists on a show, but that we really perfect how it is we, 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 we allow the artists to develop their craft so in terms of a show. Okay, that, so that would be presenting the very best. Absolutely, presenting the very best. And, have and the, of course, giving the young ones, because this is a business of a Give them a chance, but, yes. but let them aspire to be among the that best. top tier, that top shelf. Absolutely, because that's what we're we are needing now to showcase to the world and to actually bridge the gap between the people who are the um, sponsors yes. and those who are the promoters. So your appeal is to who? My appeal is to, is to government. Government facilitates the entertainment product. There are quite a bit of things we're doing um, in terms of the entertainment advisory board, looking at legislation. So yes, government has a role to play. The, the, the Noise Abatement Act, when we think about noise abatement, we ought to think about sound regulation because this is not really about noise, it's about promoting a night economy. When you go to countries like Australia, there is a developed sense persons in charge of regulating this night economy. And I'm also appealing to people who are sponsors. Put your money where your mouth is because this product, if we don't support it, Jamaica is no longer going to be the capital of reggae or dance hall. And I've been warning people about that. When you want to go to shows, it's in Europe, it's in the United States, California, and so on. We have to invest in us. And I've been telling people in the music business, there's nobody from outside of Jamaica who's going to come and save you. Yes. We have to be the investors in our own product, and that requires public-private partnership. You think about things like Reggae University as part of Rotterdam Sunsplash. Mm -hmm. We don't even have a daytime um, calendar for our reggae events. We, we, we've not conceived of it. In fact, Rebel Salute last year did this, and there was conversation about you know, cannabis and marijuana and so on, and the medical marijuana, so that there was a daytime um, you know, calendar for that event. That's the, that's the direction we need to move into. And it's part of the diversification of that dance hall product, the reggae product, that we have to offer the world. And, and, and it requires sort of going back into conceptualizing what it is we want to offer. Because we are the pulse. We, this is where the soul of the music lies. Yes. If we don't take charge of that, it's going to be that other people take charge of it for us, and that would be very sad. So regardless of who the uh, promoter is, of anything, we must look at the product and say, we want to save this, and move to save it. And then we bring, we make demands of the promoter. Absolutely. We, we, we can go to any other country to figure out what those best practices are, but we must be able to invest in who we are as Jamaicans and to invest in what we have, in fact, given the world. We hear you. Very clear. I hope others, our listeners, our viewers, especially those who can make a difference in government, in, in, in corporate Jamaica, they, they hear you too. I hope so. Doc, so nice to have you. Always good. Well, Always good. good. They have her right here on stage, still to come. You're the real Bounty Killer fans are now! Bounty Killer weighs in on current hot topical affairs in dance hall and he uses the opportunity to introduce a new foreign based dance solo every day clean up with trash every day clean up with trash and after one of the most sensational rises in reggae's history chronix is on our stage to update us on his career all coming up right here on stage we'll be right back <laughs> Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. Welcome back. His coming to the fore is widely held as one of the most sensational in reggae's history. This as his music bridges the long-standing gap in Jamaica. Between the youth driven dance soul and the roots reggae genre. And was in some circles being hailed as the new messiah of roots reggae. But like some keen observers warned, it wasn't long before the local space slighted his messages of spiritual awakening. Fly over cross and raven, 
and social justice. Welcome the savior, welcome the Rasta youth. And reverted to their disposable dance always. Some going as far as to declaring his fire cooled in Jamaica. I never ask you, not know what you tell me. But is it really? The Capital and singer agreed to a career chat with us the morning after a blistering performance aboard the Royal Independence of the Seas during Jam Rock 2016. Congratulations, sir. So good to have you to talk to today after such a, a, a fantastic performance last night that many are talking about today. All right, talk about your career for me now over the last two years. I think that's about the time we haven't heard much from you it, in, directly. We've had some anecdotal interviews, but let's sum up the last two years for me. I would call it a deliberate absence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, you have to find a balance somehow, you know what I mean? I don't want to always be in a position where I, I feel like I have to always keep up and and stay relevant in the sense of media presence, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like once the music itself is still in the hearts of the people, then, you know what I mean, that's just as much as what we need. Mm -hmm. And um, also that silence also gives you the right space mm -hmm. to, to connect with your musical self, you know what I mean? Okay. So, I mean, Personally, my reality has changed a lot since the time when I was writing Start a Fire and They Don't Know and all of those music stuff. In what um, ways? Um, in ways like, you know what I mean, you can't walk on the street without somebody asking you for a picture. There's a lot of things that can bring a level of delusion yes. upon you. Where if, if, if you don't find a way to, to create some form of silence so you can connect with that Jamar that wrote they don't know mm -hmm. start a fire here comes trouble all of those songs mm -hmm. you know I have to always stay at peace with that person so it was a, like a sabbatical this this time you you took time out to self inspect yeah, and, and at the and, same and, time and to and allow create, to and create music and also to you know what I mean? To, to accept where next I want to go, you know what I mean? And at the same time, allowing the, the body of work, which were very yeah, rapid, yeah, yeah, to, to become, soak in. To, to, yeah, to become a part of people's life. Because, yes. let me tell you, um, the only threat to a real creative person, the only threat to a real artist is his own self. Yes. You know what I mean? The only person who can who can kick Bounty Killer out of business is Bounty Killer. Yes. The only person who can get Sizzla Kalanji out of business is Sizzla Kalanji. You know? So, so you... I don't want to compete against my own music. Uh -huh. Just, so, you know what I mean? For the sake of quantity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, if, if, if they can play one song on the radio every day, then, I mean, for, for 10 years, that's better than being played six times for two years. Aren't you, you know I mean? but weren't you sometimes moved by the critique, the criticisms that were coming out? Okay, you know we are in Jamaica, people start saying, why well, chronic school now, the fire cool and those things. You heard them, what, how did you respond? What do you do? Well, it's the first how, time hearing that. You know yeah, I mean? Some were saying the fire kind of cool, the, the, the chronic fire is cool because it was blazing so hard and now it's cool. The, and so you, you didn't even hear that. No, no. Be new to that one there, first thing I hear that one there. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, while the fire was being cool in Jamaica, um, you know, myself and artists like Protege, Kelissa, Janine, we are around, around the globe. Surging, right? 24-7, you know what I mean? While, while the fire was cooling in Jamaica, I was, you know what I mean, with, with, with the Coachella, Glastonbury, you know what I mean? On stages that reggae music has never been for mm -hmm. who know how long, you know what I mean? So, I mean, since, since myself and Protege at Glastonbury, I think the Marley Brothers were the only Jamaicans on it for, you know, we were the first on it since the Marley Brothers mm -hmm. and Coachella too. And, um, 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, B B somebody B have to do it, you know what I mean? Somebody have to deal with it. Yes, somebody, you know and I, mean? I want to know. And I, I like what I'm here. But, but I want to know too. It's the vibe in Jamaica, the, 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 the mentality, the dynamics in Jamaica, wherever it may be um, at any given time. What does that mean to you, the dynamics and what the Jamaica is demanding and consuming? Yeah. Um, how do you see that and how do you play to that? Do you play to it at all? Do you ignore it? Do, are you setting your own standard, your own pace? Or are you somewhat driven by that reality, that dynamic in Jamaica? Well, I mean, every, every creative, creativity is a very unique thing. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, as soon as you accept yourself as a creative person, you have to then start to, to think how you're going to manage that creativity. And if, if creativity is unique, then the management of that creativity also have to reflect that unique nature of the creativity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I can't spend too much of my time trying to figure out how the music industry in Jamaica operates more than I spend time to figure out how I'm going to manage my own talent mm -hmm. and come up with okay. a pace at which I can really sustain myself as a creative so, person. So you allow the creative faculty to just, to just flow? Yeah man, and just make it flow. I mean, you have... Me as a person who write like four songs a day and, and, and all of that, but I feel like our music don't need another artist who can release four songs a week. So even though I could be that artist who release yes. ten songs every month, you know what I mean? I, I, I live in a studio, my house is a studio, you know what I mean? I recorded my album at, at my yard, you know what I mean? Mm. And um, I've been recording music ever since. From the get go, I have songs from 2011 that have not been released as yet. So, I have songs from Dread and Terrible that did not make Dread and Terrible. So, songs from Roots and Chalice that. So, it's like there's so much music, but I feel like what reggae music need now is somebody to conceptualize artistically mm. and not just release a song because you, you, you just finished recording it, you know what I mean? But, you know what I mean? Experiment, mm -hmm. experiment, experiment, experiment. You know what I mean? Like, don't just, all right, a them tune here on the place now, I'm going to give them one of them kind of tune. And, I mean, there's a lot of people in Jamaica doing that. Uh, you know, and I'm not interested. To tell you the truth. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but rightly so, because yeah. you don't need that. You know what I mean? Clearly, uh, you don't if, need if, that. If you have a gift, you're supposed to use it. And I feel like one of my. Um, one of my thing them in music is is to sit down and, and conceptualize, you know what I mean? Come up with new drum patterns and new new beats and you know what I mean, new harmony arrangements and even more so now I'm transcending into the, the, the arrangement of the music. Ah. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it, it, it's the arrangement of the guitars, arrangement of the horn section, the percussion, everything. Um strings, vocal um Gospel choirs, everything, everything. Ah. You know what I mean? So everything when we learn from school to home to church, everything, it, it, I'm trying to now, you know what I mean? Bring, connect to that deeper culture of not just reggae music, but the, that African beat that have been present in our music since day mm -hmm. one. Yes. From mentor, the ska, blues, jazz, Rock steady, you know what I mean? So you're, you're, you're <laughs> directing, you're musical director of self, of your career chronics, and isn't that what we saw last night? Because to me, uh, listening on, because I've heard you and watched your performances all the time, and last night I saw a band that was, I couldn't find a re anything that was not, like in total harmony. Everything was so perfect last night, it appears. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's your own, I can, and I understand that you're, you're rehearsing consistently. So is, isn't that a product of, of your own yeah, taking charge yeah, of your yeah, creative yeah, direction? Yeah. And it, it is evidence of what is happening 
in Jamaican music right now, which is, you know, people, people more focused on the music and, and, and less, and less on, the, on, on the trends and what is trending, you know what I mean? I would rather, if I'm, if I'm being paid as a musician, mm -hmm. I want to make the news for my music. Um, if I'm being paid as a musician, I want to be known for my music. If I'm being paid as a musician, then I don't want my fashion to outweigh my music. I don't want my, the gossip to outweigh my music. So it's, when, whenever I push, push the music that hard, it's, it's a defense against all the other things that threatens my music, like the hype, the noise, the trends. Mm. You know what I mean? These are the threats to Jamaican music. Because listen, you know, the trend can kill your sound because here comes a new trend and everybody forget what, what, what them was doing mm -hmm. everybody forget the Dave Kelly thing go and do something else then the Dave Kelly thing becomes a trend and them get thrown off because them, them never had to keep up with it and now somebody else had to keep up with it more advanced by your own thing than you and um, we can't, I personally, I can't afford that to happen to me you see me, cause me's a Jamaican. Me, me more Jamaican than than anybody else. You know what I mean? I, if if as a Jamaican musician, I should be the go-to person for Jamaican music. You know what I mean? When you want Jamaican music, you're supposed to know directly Damian Marley, mm -hmm. Taurus Riley. Without without even question, like I shouldn't I shouldn't be thinking about anybody else when it comes to reggae. Mm. and dance all and our vibes you know ah. <laughs> yeah so that's well. the thing we just are keeping at the vibe mm -hmm. so whenever it becomes a trend we did it still you know what i mean mm -hmm. but really and truly we're not just do we're not doing it for the trend we're doing it in and out of season we're doing it when the fire hot and we're still doing it when the fire cool. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Craig. No matter, All right, talk a little bit about yeah. the, the, the near future now. Where do you go from here? Um, so from um, I'm I'm finishing the production stage of um, my debut album. Mm -hmm. um, wow. A very interesting process. Yes. Right? interesting credits for you on there yes yes yeah. yes i'm working with some talented people from across the world you know mm -hmm. what i mean and a lot of local talent mm -hmm. in terms of producers and musicians i have zinc fence musicians playing on it i have some more veteran jamaican musicians playing on it um, I have musicians from Chicago, musicians from London, you know what I mean? Nice vibe, you know what I mean? So we're kind of just, you know, connecting, connecting cultures to find that deeper culture, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, so, yeah. When are you going to give us? When are you going to give us that, that album? I mean, as soon as it is given to me. Yes. As a finished thing. Okay. So you're not you know putting I mean? yourself on any timeline on it no timeline i would love to i would love to but i i find out now even more than ever before that they can program music like that same you know what i mean yeah can program music and it's when it's my creativity because i'm i, I i'm a one-man band sometimes you know what mm. i mean where it's just me from building the rhythm to recording myself you know what I mean? You have songs like Behind Curtain where it's literally me and Teflon build the rhythm. Then I go to studio, record myself, mix it, release it. Mm. Good, you know what I mean? But then, you know, I, I, I just want to explore something different. Where there's more people, something bigger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not bigger in the sense of better or whatever, but more people. I feel like when more souls involved, it's more soulful. You know? yeah. Chronic, sir. So good to talk to you, sir. A very, very good insight, I think, uh, on what's going on with you in your head. And you confirmed for me what I heard last night in that tight band of yours delivering that set on this cruise, which is 
undoubtedly one of the most outstanding performances in this Jam Rock 2016. Thank you so much. What good sir? Blessed love. Respect. I grew up in a place called Ensam City. Spanish town grooving. Everybody nice. All right, there you have him. Chronics. Still one of the greatest talents Jamaica has ever produced. Stay with us. The Warlord is next. Need I say more? Live and direct, hear me now. I grew up in a place called Yellow Vega. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage. So much more than entertainment. Welcome back. He was one of the star providers on the recently docked. Welcome to Jam Rock Reggae Cruise. Never let no problems get you home. I don't say focus and know your road. His performance, though, was met with mixed reviews and generated some controversy. This when he added fuel to what appears to be a brewing feud between himself and former Alliance member Futa Hype. But though well known for being outspoken and often controversial, the Warlord is also well known for breaking some of the biggest names in dancehall and is now on our stage to introduce a new face. Bounty Killer, right now, right here on our stage with his timely end of year visit. That's what we're calling it. The end of year visit from Bounty Killer. So all of you who stop me every day ask about Killer, when he might come back. Here he is. Killer, welcome, sir. Kaboom. W Man. Wicked, wicked. <laughs> Bless, blessed love. Congrats on the performance and the ship. The jam Thanks. Rock. You're part of family, I know. <laughs> I guess. Yes, they, I would th think that you're like a staple. Everybody has asked where you are uh, in the future, I suspect. I guess. But there was a little bit of controversy about Futa and you. Because you say a thing on the mic uh, which Futa took issues with. Um, what, what's your response to that? Is well, it? everybody know what that guy said about me, and he never speak my name in the right context. And nobody that I break on the forefront not supposed to come discuss if me at or not. And I'm, okay. I'm a hot spot. I'm oh, not so that's a where it's guy. coming from. I'm a hot spot, not a hot guy. Everything in my surrounding is hot, yes. including him. That's where him come and get hot. So him should never say that. So every time I see him, I just want to put him in his place. Yeah, and if I was not, I couldn't do anything. Oh, so you saw him on, on the stage because he was yeah. right there on the, the side of stage. Yeah, you see this? Real hot spot. Yes. So, so you for talk about bounty, don't talk. But you know what some people say, Kina, you a man no business with about hot. Because you're, you're the first dance all artist for say, me no business about hot. Because no, but whether I'm you make no, two dance. No, real history now. Yeah. Me are the artist, dance all artist ever. Yeah. From 1991 till now, me the on stage I talk to you. <laughs> Name my next artist who act like that. Okay. Well, uh, uh, I'm not just we can't I'm the artist ever. Okay, so hot is defined not by number one song. No, only. but to how long your reign. The reign and relevance. If you're talking about the art sensation, a sensation doesn't last. Okay. I'm, I'm at impact. So you're talking about the brand Bounty Killer. Artist dancehall brand. Who has the biggest dancehall name? Okay. And this is not from winning a Grammy or selling record overseas. This is from dominating Jamaica, who reigned the artist in dance hall in Jamaica from 1991 till now. What is his name? Name him. And the, the hottest name is right now. You only could put Ninja Man yes. as a reigning champion like Bounty. And that's my father. Who's that's the man who put me on the staple. Who sustained relevance? Bounty Killer Ninja Man is the two longest reigning dance hall champion. And, and the Dr. Bean Man? And Beanie Man as well. Yes. Okay. But Beanie come after Bounty. Okay. From my style, no disrespect, but I want people to remember these things. And the ones them right now who are hot, they're your children or grandchildren. They are doing their thing. They are the 2000s. Yes. I'm, I'm from then, no. But come and to think of it, Killer. This, there's nobody who is really hot in dance hall who's not part of your bloodline, so to speak. I don't know, even know what people call hot. All right. It's Mavado, Poppy, not to mention the, um, the world boss. But, <laughs> but Alkaline, how is he figured in all of that? Because 
it, some say he took his style and whatever from Carter. And, but do you see him as part of your family, your bloodline? No, it the fact that he's a bloodline. He's, he's, a, he's stealing Cardell's style. It still doesn't make him a part of our family. OK. But everybody have influence in music. Yeah. Just like when I came out, I have influence of Shabba and Bujo, and you could hear it in my music. Mm. But it never really made me a thief them style. It was just they are the dominant one in my days coming up, and that's why you're listening to. And you never intend to pattern it, but that's what playing and that's what giving you the vibe. Okay. So it, emulation is going to be there. Mm -hmm. Or imitation, anything you want to call it. But some people don't want to admit that I heard music and like it. Then make it seem like I dream and just come up with music, me alone. The other day I was saying something, because you said it to me the other day, and I want you to affirm it, because I was saying it in a debate with somebody the other day, that you have received the most negative press in dancehall history, prior to Cartel, of course, before Cartel. Yeah. You, from, 19, to, from, 2000, from 1991, you received the most negative press. Didn't you tell me that? Well, Isn't I received a lot, yes. And it was unfair to me, because most of the things I didn't, we didn't know about them. But back in the days, people used to pay people to write negative things. Mm -hmm. Give thanks to the media and the press today. I think it's more clean and cleansed. The media. It's not so corrupted like back in the days. People used to have their publicists writing negative stuff about their arch rivals. OK, so to me. How do you deal with it when man attack things where hurt you and, and so on? Nowadays, you're expressing yourself in social media, because you, you take your Twitter or your your, your IG or your Facebook or whatever, and you, you say what you want to say. Well, it does, it does. But prior to that, how did you deal with it? Did you feel, how did you feel? What no, back in the days, no, you see, back in the days, it's like I never know my job. You're a public figure, so yeah. people going to always have public scrutiny about you. OK, so you were, you can't you were responding to angry them. Yeah, you, you have to allow it. You choose a public job, so you choose to be in the public's eye. So you're like the public's property. Okay. They're going to speak all type of thing, what they don't know about yourself. Same and you have to bear with it. Or you go get a nine to five in an office where nobody know you, you're just a regular <laughs> guy. <laughs> all right. Let's, OK, so let's get some things behind us. Your kids are said to be warring. I don't know if they're a real war. A real <laughs> war, I go on, or, or what? You're pitting them. Exercise, you're, man. I don't really want. <laughs> exercise, my exercise. No, but you see, that situation, yeah. I'm very disappointed with the music industry. Yes. With Papi and Mavada, it show you how we Jamaican, we, we love negative things and we like break down each other. Mm -hmm. Let me give you the best example now. People remember say Papi and Mavada sing song together. Papi have one song named Champagne Fly, <laughs> Man <laughs> Feeling I. Mavada did a remix to it, you know. And that was a nice hit for Papi to have a little international twist potential. Everything could have gone for the song there, you know. And you know, we never get excited, say, my bad and Papi do song. See, when them start singing two little stupid songs against each other, everybody get excited. My bad and Papi, like, out of and Papi singing together. Yes. Or fighting against each other. Which one would make music uh, better? Or are we Jamaican better off? Yes. And they sang together, and it wasn't a big thing. But the moment they go against each other, what, what, what is the excitement about? Because we love negativity. Mm. So the man, the man manipulate, the, <laughs> the manipulate Yo, them. Jamaican then. dance hall fans are stupid. Ah. None of the songs when mother and papi sing against each other still don't go like the remix with them do together. Okay. Couldn't do nothing for music. You gonna listen back that remix and listen all the songs they sang against each other and tell me if them better than the song there. I wish one of them could have given you a hit on the billboard. And nobody never get behind the puppy and the mother of the collaboration. But as them start the rivalry, the whole I selected them and the discharge them are the biggest thing. Cause that we feed off of negativity. Get excited, yeah. So, so I like how they just decide to put it aside. And it's never fear. Puppy supposed to be mother of the musical nephew. A nephew, yes. If, if we're talking about the lineage. Mavada and Cartel supposed to be musical brothers, and Papi supposed to be Cartel musical son. Mm -hmm. So, oh, uncle and nephew figure no war. It no fear and it no balance. What so about, what never, about the, no the recent thing with Cartel and Mavado appearing to that? reigniting the Gully Gaza? Well, I decided for that. Okay. That's a balance. A Cartel and Mavado something, and for them, they said for that. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. That seemed like something we could have gone. Fear. But it's now dead, eh? It dead? Ah, what? Rivalry never dead, it does put aside. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you call a man and say, look, gentlemen. No, me don't call nobody, but you don't talk to the nobody. Song about vice. The song them stop vice. Okay. But nobody never say, it stop. It does not happening right now, but anytime it can get up back, like, get up back right here. <laughs> so, all right, so Carter's moved to GP. What do you make of that? Well, I can't tell. I don't even know the reason why, but. Yeah, because. System of the system. A lot of people puzzled about it. I, I don't know. But that happens all the time. Prisoners get transferred where yeah. we are going. You can't question that, that our system work. But what I'm saying is just because he's recording in behind bars, and, and they now know. You can record anyway, man. We know about technology, all right? And we know the system. Anything in Ado, he can do it anyway. But GP is known for recording behind bars. Listen to me now, man. Them Jack, just your, Jack your mid hits behind bars. This is a better place to record because they yes. have a system. Yeah, they actually, right, they actually have the a prison. studio. Yeah. When we went down there, it was a studio. Yeah. So that is nothing wrong if someone in lockup and recording, yeah. you have a rehabilitation activity in every facility. So I don't know what people are making. He sure that for that is a negative thing. Okay. Like the prisoner, them for down there now do nothing and them have them skills. Way on Sting. Sting is struggling. They're going to honor people like you, icons and so on. They're struggling to make a Sting 2016, it appears. Your take? Well, it's a nice thing to be honored when it's genuine and sincere. So, so you don't have no problem with the honor? Well, me know them uh, sincerely honor me. It's because the show look like it in a little <laughs> spot. I guess they want to say they're honoring somebody, but me, they don't honor me. Mm. Remember Sting promoters said, I'm like Trevor Burbick and <laughs> another such artist is like Mike Tyson. But those, those are just words, though, killer. So I'm saying... Because if they are an honor legend honor and not call your name, the people would be vexed with them. So it's just what yeah, well, it it's, Well, that's what's you're, you're important. It's not what's important, no, listen, the people's call, the people's position. The two position. greatest artists ever great sting stages, Ninja Man and Bounty Killer. Yes. So you can't do no honoring without putting those two names, and they don't rate me, and I don't think they rate Ninja either. Do you wish them well? I wish them well all the time. Do you know that it's stand a chance of not happening this year? Well, I think it better if you can make it presentable, don't do it. Don't bother come with no little... Jumble, dribble. People don't want to see that. Yeah, if you have a presentation, leave it alone and come back again. You think it can take a... Because that's going to damage the show. Because last year, year damage the show. You know? Last year, presentation damaged the show. Okay. And this year, sounds like it's going to be worse. So, maybe next year's thing is lying in a hearse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see that. But No, but I'm saying, if yes. they continue to do that, I'm playing and just straight and ram. I mean, I'm not put you up. Clear enough. We they appreciate show, that. They pay life support. And if them do it like what they are planning to do, the plug will go pull next year. Okay. Well, you've spoken, sir. Donald Trump now. Why? I'm my president. Why? <laughs> I tell you. Mystery man, take it from them. You don't know what happened, but it happened, sir. It happened. It happened, man. I tell you why. That's how you feel, now. tell us the world of bad people. You see? <laughs> Especially America. <laughs> Well, well, well. Well, well. me have a case go over, we do what we have to do in this four year because we can't live with that man there, we can't stay with him, we can't deal with Trump. Yeah. So, me have just a case guy, I got America now. We have to go back there, but quick, quick. But he's been toning, I mean, there's been some shifts in like some the of the rhetoric. The man that meant to worry about calm him down because they're man there. They're man there and wicked, you know. Yeah. They're about to pop out the tweet, them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but, but there's been some toning down and so on. People expect that he will respect. Yeah, Those man. who didn't vote for him. Yeah, but watch you now. The non-politician, mm -hmm. the people them want that. A regular man. Yeah. Because the politician them have a political way of thinking. Do you think we want that in Jamaica? Yes. That, that we want. Some people, when they're in our politics, they're just into the people. Okay. Some people too into politics. So they never consider the... Career people. politicians. Because they would do it politically. Everything them do it politically. Politics, yeah. Yes. That Donald Trump have over Hillary, he's just not a politician. He seems like a regular man who faces the similar thing when me here got you. So I think they need some of those in politics in Jamaica, they need people like them to advise them. Okay. Something, somewhere. All right, Killer. Well, we're going to take a break, can we?
Sure. You, if, if you want to talk more, you know, tell me more things about politics and law. No, I don't want to talk too much about politics. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. Let me know you are going to have music now. I'm We're going to talk music with, with you more. More yeah. music because you have, there's a, a collaboration with you and a Canadian based yeah. dance holder who right now is about to get the killer a stamp of approval officially now on stage. Yeah. So we're going to do that after the break. So just give them a little uh, tease and tell them to wait first. Oh, stage. well, it's no consignment, only cash alone, every time. You don't know. <laughs> Trinity Chris in the building. Okay. You know. All right, so that's next. Right here on stage. Remember that? Every day clean up with trash. Every day clean up with trash. No consignment is only cash alone. No consignment is only cash alone. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. And we're back with uh, Bounty Killer's latest introduction to Jamaican dance song. His name is Trinity Chris, right now in this segment. Chris, come sir. Welcome, welcome, Chris. Pleasure, sir. Thank you. Blessed Bobby. love. Well, you know, just jump in and tell us about your Jamaican connection. Wow, my Jamaican <clears throat> connection. Um, my parents, my mother's from Craftsville, Clarendon. My father's from uh, Rockport. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. You're Canadian born then. Canadian born, yes. Yes, yes. So I've been coming here from, from when I was a child and just uh, kept the roots alive and, you know, yeah, nonstop. And how long in music? Oh, for years, since I was about 12. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing it for a long, long time. My first video was on BET when I was 16. Yeah, so man, all our life, we got yeah. Canada. Trinity is a Canadian based dance hall artist yeah, in Trapal. Yep. See it? Yep, yep. Cool. So, so you, your connection with Killer now, um, this, this collaboration, talk about it. How did it come about? Wow. Um, big up Rash Shady. Um, big up Specs. <laughs> big up uh, Kevin. Um, I've known them for a while. And um, I've known Killer for a while, and I'm obviously a big fan. But um, I came with a really liquor wicked. Yeah, which changed him name now to Rashidi. Rashidi. Oh, yep. okay. liquor wicked, the liquor, liquor artist wicked. now. Yeah, yep. liquor wicked. Yeah, him and liquor wicked link up now. And from long time, Chris admired the vibes, and mm -hmm. you don't know, we know same of that Jamaican, Canadian, twisted, international dancehall vibe. So okay, but they was it to... always dancehall though? Finish. Always, 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 always. Weren't you tempted to go hip hop? Well, it's not even tempted. It's my mind's forever moving. I'm always trying to recreate and innovate myself. Yes. So I don't want to sound like someone else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I always want my sound to be different and, and stand out from the rest. Yes. I mean, that's how you bust. That's how you gravitate fans and attention. Yeah. So I came with this trap hall situation and um, I already recorded the song, but it was, um, it was Liko Wicked, Rash Shady, and Specs that said, you know what I mean? If you're gonna take it to the forefront on, this, on the realest way, you have to go for the general. The general? I had to go for the general. This song was taken to me. I got paid to do it. Yes. I don't know what happened. I just never end up with the song. Mm -hmm. So a couple of years after, Chris kept calling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I get a call from a very important person in Big my up life now? Big up the mama, man. Yeah. When I get that call, I said, no, what? what? Yeah. What will happen? Trinity Chris. Yeah, the link. This person called me about Trinity Chris. Sure, no. Sure. I know I got to do this song. No, this is yeah. serious, cause this song is seven years ago. Yeah. And this person is still calling about it. For sure. Wow. And, what, and when we go listen about the song, it felt like the first time I heard it. So I said, you know what? This is magic. Maybe let's it's do the it. Time. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's it time was the time. Time has to come. Yeah. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Okay. Well, let's take it right now, gentlemen. Right? Here. Absolutely. No consignment is only cash alone. No. No consignment is only cash alone. No. The cash alone. Holy. The cash alone. Yeah. Well, I'll launch him, she's city bread. The general, them now see me dead. But you tell y'all she won't give me When she see me, my sign, she gone in on the bed. No consignment is only cash. No. No consignment is only cash. Never. The cash only. The cash only. Every time. <laughs> no consignment. <laughs> Only cash alone. Trinity cash Chris and carriage. featuring the warlord. Bounty killer. <laughs> wow. It, yeah. So what's happening with it now in terms of radio spin and so on? Back mm, home? Yeah, uh, yeah. Specs, G98, he's 
broken it really well. All the sounds, big up uh, Specs on G98, every station, 105.5. It's um, currently number one on two internet stations up there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, it's like a huge anthem. It's apart from the Warlord collab, what else is, can you tell us about your career? Wow, I mean, we're here in Jamaica trying to, you know, build a brand and build my name. Big up Flex, big up Stampede. Shout out to Oracle Recordings for signing me. They're an English-based uh, company. So, I mean, if a dancehall act's going to break, it has to break here in the Mecca. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, my brother, he's shown me, he's teaching me a lot of things, you know what I mean? And, you know, what better way and tutelage I can get right now to make that transpire into something that even half of what he's lived. You know what I mean? Have you motivated or somewhat a little sad about the, the inundation of dancehall in mainstream and not enough Jamaicans fronting it? What I'm sad about is um, the culture vulturing sometimes and we as Jam culture vulturing. Yeah, you, we're, we're you not. Think we're that not. Name is fitting. Uh, it's very fitting because <laughs> I'll tell you this because you know we allow them to come here. It doesn't exist at all. Yeah, they, we allow them to come here and take, and they're you know they're not giving us the reverence, and then we as Jamaicans are not concealing the business to making sure that when they come, you know everyone gets paid and everyone's all right because they're thriving off it. All the major hits from all the major artists in the last eighteen months are dance hall influenced. Yes. So uh, yeah. you know what I mean. Bieber and Drake and these guys should be, you know, they should be ambassadors saying, yo, we wouldn't have this if it wasn't for Jamaica. Do you try to reach out to Drake? Um, no, not really. He knows who I am, though. He knows exactly who I am. Really okay. good. Really good. Really good. Mm. Yeah. And who is he to you? He's a big, bad artist, and I respect him a lot, but um, he's a Torontonian like myself that's, you know, striving for that same mm. goal. You know what I mean? You know, when he was coming up, he had to make reference to me in one of his songs. Because at that time, I was the dancehall guy up there. Okay. You know what I mean? And still is and still will be. And mm. They're not giving us that, 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 that credit. You know, Tory Lane, he's another Torontonian. And, you know, you know it's got to be known. They have to let it be known. And then us as Jamaicans, the royalties, the, um, the ass caps, the soul cans, tracking the money, tracing the money, just don't freely just let it be taken. Yeah. Clamp it down. More money will fester. More money will be made. Of course. Mm -hmm. Who is he? The warlord. Bounty killer. Bounty killer. <laughs> in Canada. <clears throat> Who is he in that? What? When he comes, it'll be like when Barack was president. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Toronto's waiting for him. Canada's waiting for him. Wow. It's a wrap when he follows. So, Kila, no. Your son introduced Good your move. son to yeah, Jamaican, man. to a big stage like some fest and take. Talk about the. Well, it's a perfect platform, you know? As nobody never saw we perform together, as it was the first we ever performed to. We never performed nowhere before. Mm -hmm. So it was just a good look. And then some fest, they said, no international night. And I said, OK, let's bring my international son. Yeah. <laughs> and give him an international spice. Yeah, yeah. Mark, 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 Mark. So it was good, you know, calling on him on safari and putting a little international vibes in it. And he enjoyed himself. So we're talking about major, major. That's the man we're talking about right here, the son of the warlord bounty killer, an international songwriter, producer, and performer, right? That's who we're talking about. Look him up if you haven't seen him yet, but he was just on our show in the summer. Did it right, do anything for him special? Yeah, it did a lot for him. It, it gave him a lot of confidence, and he mm -hmm. gave him that approval that Jamaican people want to see, mm -hmm. and okay. he's excited about that. He knows that he's a star already. Yeah, he's yeah, been performing sure. and touring. Yeah. But you know, to get that Jamaica love, it's a different approval. Yeah, he told me that. So just as Chris said, yes, yeah, so yeah. he does give him some more fuel and fire. True, 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 true. Nice. And Trinity, you move now, to, you, you move forward. This, is this a special moment for you? How, how special is this in your this, career? This is very surreal. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've envisioned this moment, not on this level, but I've envisioned this moment. And um, it's just going to be music on top of music, more videos on top of videos, nonstop. And the song is getting a lot of rotation in the streets. Yeah, man. It's, I, it's becoming a street anthem. Yeah, it really Yeah. Mm. I got a big up Boom Boom. I got a big up Swatch them. I got a big up Peanut. Yeah, man. Uh, Weed Seed. All the um, super Speaker hype. work it. Yeah, man. I got to big all these people up and everyone I did. Will you be here for Christmas? I most definitely be. Uh, the 26th, I'll be back. The oh, so you'll be missing GT Extravaganza Killer. So we catch him back at Galladay Bunks. Galladay, yeah, okay. Yeah, we're going to be But well, you're doing Bunks. GT yeah, in St. Louis That's big, you know. Big yeah, man. Year, man. No, that's our concert. Every year, you, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't see nobody, you can see Bunty and Beanie. True, true. Same. Father GT, our father. Okay. And GT is a man we have a lot to do with my success. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's one of the first men who helped to break me on the radio. Because when I just came out, it's mostly hardcore 
underground songs. It wasn't fit for radio play. And it was a man like GT you now who come and make me convert the songs them and okay. fix them for radio mm -hmm. until it lead to Mighty Mike and me and Irie oh, become Irie crew. Okay. like a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. So big up GT. Everything. Yo, warlord. Salute. Boss listener. <laughs> yes. Real boss listener. You know. <laughs> Canada can't get him out of my analyst. And a general. <laughs> you you see, we ever run for prime minister. You know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go open up. We've called for opening up of yeah, yeah. non politicians in Jamaican parliament. Thank you, brother. We had a prime minister. And Jamaica House. <laughs> No, All right, there you have it. Our show for this week, Winford Williams, on behalf of all of us, thanking you for joining us. Do join us again next week for more on set. No consignment is only cash alone. No, no consignment is only cash alone. No, the cash alone. Only the cash alone. Yeah. Well, I'll chip cheese to the bread. The general, them now see me dead. But you tell y'all she won't give me dead. When she see me, my sign, she gone in at the bed. watching our video if you are not yet a subscriber click now and be on stage always